get started for right now. Um, so a little bit about myself. First, I want to introduce you all. Thank you all for joining my session. My session is called Living in a Fishbowl. Uh, my name is Jessica Martinez. I am a senior majoring in political science with a concentration in law and politics and a minor in health promotion at UTEP. This is my fourth year as a UTEP student and I will be graduating next spring, hopefully. Um, some of my future plans are to go to law school. Um, I don't know where I wanna go yet, but I, I plan on applying to law school and I eventually plan on running for office. I don't know necessarily what office um, I would want to run for, but for sure I do want to get involved with the federal government and politics. Um, on campus, I am currently serving as a Student Government Association president. This is my second year as a president for SGA. In my second year at UTEP, I served as the executive assistant for the president. And then my first year, I was an acceler and a legislative assistant for the collegiate senator of nursing. Um, I am also currently serving as the Kappa Delta Chi pre uh, president and the new member educator. So that's just a little bit about myself um, and I hope you all enjoy the presentation. Um, my presentation is gonna be kind of interactive. So um, if you all just want to raise your hand and unmute yourself um, or raise your hand and then um, I'll unmute you whenever you are coming to speak or you can unmute yourselves when I call you for the presentation. So first, I want to start off by asking you guys, what do you think, what do you see when you see this picture? I don't know if there's a raise hand feature. Uh, I see it as somebody that's always being watched. Okay. Any other thoughts on this picture? Okay, cool. Well, so as a rule of thumb, before I continue on, um, I'll give like about a five second awkward silence um, for any responses to come in. What do you see when you see the sun? And y'all can feel free to unmute yourselves and talk. I see a smile um, in the kid's face. So I would say admiring, I don't know. Okay. Okay, now moving on to this next one. What do you see when you see this? A bigger fishbowl. <laughs> yes, absolutely bigger fishbowl. Um, so going back to this first picture. Um, the concept and the idea of living in a fishbowl means that you are constantly watched, um, that everyone always has their eyes on you and that um, you feel like you have that pressure. So this one specifically shows the pressure. Um, this is one person, practically any person, any leader, um, anyone who's being constantly watched by this one person. Um, we may not realize it, but everyone is living in their own version of a fishbowl. We all have our own fishbowl that we are being watched through. Um, it may not be as severe as this, but we all have someone that we're being watched by. In this picture, we have a bigger fish tank. So this is actually a tank, not necessarily a fishbowl. But in here, you see one little boy looking in. He's admiring, but who is he admiring? Um, it's not clear who he's looking at. I don't know my species in fish, but could he be looking at this pink one? What about this orange one? Who is he, who are his eyes really on? And who in here feels like they're being watched by the little boy when in reality he's only watching just one or maybe two? Um, this concept of living in the fish tank is you're in a bigger group of people you um, you're, you have people looking at you, but they may not always be looking at you, but you never know when they are looking. And this one is an even bigger fish tank, but I like to compare, I like to call this one like the aquarium. Um, you have people admiring, taking pictures and constantly looking at what's going on inside. 
there's a big diverse pool of sea creatures. Um, it's really easy to hide behind someone in here. It's easy to not spot a certain fish because they're hiding behind the shark. They're hiding behind um, a rock. They're way in the back so people don't see them. But if you look closely, people have their cell phones. They're constantly taking pictures. They're looking, they're pointing things out. Um, and even like if you see like over here, like closer to like the very far end, you'll see um, three little kids standing as if they're getting their picture taken. The picture may not be wanting to capture all of the fish. The focus of it might be on the children, but the fish do come out in the background. Oops, I went too far ahead. The picture might come out in the background. So in this, you see the notion of you may be watched at a certain time, but people will also be taking pictures. Social media lives on forever and ever and ever. Um, you have people that are taking pictures of what's going on and that they're going to capture. They may not use it right then and there, but it'll come back. Um, also, who knows what they're doing with those pictures? Are they keeping them on their phones? Are they keeping them on their tablets and their devices? Or are they posting them? Are they using them for research? Are they using them for possible slander later on? Um, in this day and age, we never know what's going on and what people, why people have their phones. So this one is a picture of a president with Secret Service. So you'll see how Secret Service is there to protect the president. Um, but you also see here how there's people with their cameras. And as soon as that one person comes off the plane, as soon as the president comes off the plane, it's security 101. Oh, I forgot to add another picture, but I have another picture. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Sorry, my, I'm having some technical difficulties with the presentation. Okay, yeah, no, this was the one you uploading. Okay, sorry, there we go. Um, so I'm gonna move on to story time that will encompass what has happened in the pictures that I showed you and why I wanted to share my story with you all. So being SGA president uh, for two years, you are under a certain, um, you're watched like a hawk basically. So this issue, um, I've seen it happen a lot. Um, personally, I have seen people wanting to take pictures of stuff that is going on in my life um, that I don't necessarily, um, that it, it's not, the pictures won't portray what's actually going on. Um, I'm always being watched. And yes, it's, I'm just a normal UTEP student. Um, you think that, oh, I'm just a student. No one's going to do anything. You're always being watched. Um, I have had the back pre-COVID um, when I'll be walking through the classroom or when I'll be walking to class, like around campus, people will stop me and talk to me. And it's like, oh, I didn't know you knew who I was, but I don't know you, but you definitely know me. Um, at any point in time, it's like you always have to be on your tiptoes. Um, and I learned from a story from a good friend of mine, um, and that's whose story I'm going to be sharing. So I have my best friend from high school. Her name is Victoria. Um, she doesn't go to the school. She went to another school up in Texas. And so I don't give too much information about her, um, but she is my best friend. She was the president of one of her organizations at her campus. And one day, um, Victoria went out with her friends. Um, she was supposed to have an event later that night, but she went out with her friends just to go get something to eat. Um, college students, we ball on budgets. Um, so she went to go get some like simple chips and food and some of her, she met up with some of her friends beforehand who were drinking. Um, what happened with Victoria was that she was, she took a drink, nothing too bad. Um, her friends recorded her taking that drink that week. Um, and they posted on her, they posted on a private Instagram story. 
let me tell you something about these private Instagram stories. They are never private. If you have a spam account, if you have a private account, they are never private. Um, in her private Instagram uh, story, she had it open for a hundred of her closest friends to see, or a hundred of her the friends that she thought that she thought were closest to her, right? Um, and there were a couple of people in her organization with her. She went to the event later that night and then she went home. Everything was fine. That weekend comes up and it was, it was a conference. It was like a weekend long conference. It was a Friday night. Um, that weekend comes up and her performance just is not the best. Um, people are thinking that she's extremely um, out of it. They see her and they're like, well, what's going on? Um, and then people that have her on her private Instagram stories start talking and they say, well, she went out to drink a uh, day before the event. And um, Victoria was like, well, what are you like talking about? What are you trying to insinuate? And they told her, well, you were out of it. Like you were hungover at a meeting. You were hungover at our, not the, at the like next day conference. And she was like, no, I wasn't like, I, she was just like, I was just physically exhausted. And it turned into this big thing. Instead of the focus of that event the next day being the like conference that she was at, it wasn't. The focus of the event was her like demeanor, how she was acting, um, just because she was a president and she was exhausted. Now, they don't know that Victoria at night was working on preparing the stuff for the next day. She got two hours of sleep. She was beyond exhausted. And even the week of the, the week leading up to the conference, um, all of the events, she was planning them with her group. Um, but people assumed that she went hungover just because she had drank the night before. And that really affected Victoria because within her organization, they have this, um, it's like they're like a newsletter. Um, one of the articles on the newsletter was about her um, being drunk at the, um, or her not being drunk, her being hung over at the next day's event. Um, Victoria was very shocked. Um, she was terrified because she didn't know how this would impact her um, ability to stay as president for the organization. Mind you, this organization is so prestigious that she needed it to get into, that she needed to have it on her resume. And it was so important for her to get into vet school later on in her life. Um, so as Victoria was coming up and she was, um, she was going through the conference, she could not stop thinking about what people were saying. The newsletter came up and it was a story. It was an op-ed, an op-ed ed uh, article about what Victoria, um, what was going on with Victoria. That came up about three weeks after the event and she was devastated. Her national coordinator called her and told her, what is going on? Was this true? Um, Victoria explained the whole situation, but because someone had submitted the video that, that, some, that uh, was posted on Victoria's story um, or her private story to the nationals, they didn't believe her. They literally thought that she was hungover. Um, and since then, the relationship between her nationals and herself has been rocky. Um, she's trying everything that she can to overcome what was going on. But she also realized that, you know, why are, who, who, who put that on there? Like, who sent the private story video that was on there? Um, she went to see who she had on her private story and she had about 100 people, all whom she thought were her close friends. I was one of them, so I was able to see what she posted. Um, but I would never share that because that's, you know, it's her private stuff. It's her private information, and she's my best friend. I wouldn't put her in that situation. Um, a couple of months later, she finds out who shared the story. It was her vice president who shared that story about her to her nationals and who wrote the op-ed article. Um, she didn't find out because she was instigating. She find out. She found out because it came up. Um, that saying that all that what goes around comes around is pretty true. Um, so Victoria realized that it was her vice president.
someone who she thought she would confide in, someone who saw her go through the struggle of the entire week, um, stressing, planning for the event, getting no sleep, someone who knew that she hadn't gotten any sleep the morning, uh, the day of the, uh, the next day of the event, because she was up planning and coordinating the events. Um, but they submitted that up for her. And she was torn. She didn't know who she could trust or what was going on. Um, she confronted her vice president and her vice president said, well, I thought you really were hungover. Like, that's not right. Like, I didn't go out. I didn't post it. So I don't, uh, no one can know anything about me, but that's what you get for posting it. And Victoria was like, but it was on my private story only for people that I can trust. And I thought I trusted you. And then um, her vice president said, well, this is what you get for trying to take away my position. Um, the vice president beforehand had ran, uh, ran, the vice president had run for president against Victoria beforehand and Victoria beat her overwhelmingly because of her work ethic and her demeanor. So this essentially turned into a story of jealousy, but it made Victoria realize that, you know, she is living in a fishbowl. Like the people you think you can trust are not necessarily everyone you can trust. Um, she has a handful now. We, I talked to her about it. We had our cries. Um, and I was able to relate to her in my experiences as SGA president and currently as the president of my sorority. Um, anything that we do will affect us now, will affect us in our future, and can be taken away in a different meaning that it actually is. So, for example, um, I could be here with you guys. I could be posting. I could be like, oh, hey, like, this is cool. But in my background, you could see possibly, um, I don't know, like, let's say last night I went out and, or let's say last night I got food. I got taken. I got some tacos. I got my horchata. You'll see a styrofoam cup back there. Would you guys think that it's horchata or would you guys think that it's um, Eskimo hut? It's a smoothie with alcohol in it in the back. You'll never know but you might want to be willing to take up a screenshot and then post it and then say, this person was drinking during her session just because of something that was in my background. Um, I could have, I don't have something with me right now, but I could have like a red solo cup with some juice in it because I mean, sometimes we do well on a budget and you know, we got to get some disposable um, like cups, plates, spoons, forks, whatever. And I can have a red solo cup here with some orange juice in it and I could be drinking it. Y'all could be thinking that I'm drinking um, alcohol or beer or something that's not orange juice, when in reality, I do have orange juice in here. Um, those misconceptions that people have about you when you are living in a fishbowl can mean a lot and are very significant just because of the positions that you have or what you wanna do in your future. I told you guys earlier that I eventually want to run for office, um, some sort of office within the federal government. and Anything that goes on right now that I'm doing can affect me in the future. I'm sure some of you all see or have heard of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She um, was in college and she had a, she posted a video um, of her dancing to a song. And now that she is in Congress, she has people, a lot of people have looked at that video and have seen wow, you know, that's very irresponsible. Um, why is someone acting like that? Like, that's not how our Congresswoman should act. Well, that was back then. Um, but they were able to go all the way in and see that for her. Um, and that's kind of what I told Victoria. I'm like, you know, anything that we do is we're being watched always. We're not protected. There's only a, so, a handful of people you can trust. Um, right now, my trust circle is my parents, my little brothers, and I have like maybe two, three friends that have been there for me through anything that have seen me overcome any adversity and that's it. I don't have a really big trust circle. Um, and that is for the reason that you never know who is going to turn on you later on. Um, and that is what I told Victoria and what I advise her to do. She since has no private story on Instagram. She has no private Snapchat story. 
Um, she doesn't have any, what is it, those like Finsta accounts where um, you just post whatever you're feeling. Um, social media should be a place for us to engage and express ourselves, but we also have to be mindful of what we put because we never know what may be taken out of context. We also don't know what other people might perceive be engaging or not. So right now, um, I, want to, I want to stop and I want to, you all to take the time to open up your Instagram accounts. If you have an Instagram or if you have a, a Snapchat or if you have Facebook, um, open up your Instagram account or your social media account and go to your profile. I'll give you all a couple, like a couple of seconds to do that. Your profile? Yeah, like any social media account that you have. You don't have to show it. I'm not going to make you all show your, your social media accounts. This is just for you to see and self-evaluate. So you have your so you have your profile open on social media and you go through it. Is there anything on there that may be misconstrued? Um, do you have a picture of something where people might think, oh, what is actually like, what are they actually drinking? What is that cup that's right there? And I'm going to stop sharing my screen real quick so you guys can see a picture of what I'm talking about. I'll give you guys time. Look through your profiles, look through your uh, different social media accounts, go through your Instagram, go through your Twitter, go through your Snapchat, go through your Facebook, any social media accounts that you have. Yes. Okay, y'all are going through them. And it really see what you actually have been posting and what's on there. So I wanna show you all a little something. I don't know if you can see very clearly. Uh, probably not through here. In one of my pictures, um, I have a picture of myself with Dr. Natalicio. And Dr. Natalicio was uh, UTEP's former president. And in the picture, you can see, uh, we were at a scholarship luncheon. In the picture, you see what looks like a glass but you don't know what that glass is. It's an empty empty glass. Um, that's actually where we were drinking our teas and the beverages that we had. We also had coffee around there, but that's where they served us our beverages in. Um, people can take that and misconstrue it to be that it's actually like an alcoholic beverage. Um, and you never know what people are gonna say or what they're gonna do about a picture. Now, if you have a Twitter, you can see what you liked. You can go in and you can see what post you, um, what was something that you liked on social media. And I'm going to go back to my presentation to show you all what I mean by this. Mm -hmm. Hope you guys can see it. This is from uh, Senator Cruz from Texas. This was a screenshot that was taken from his social media. I don't know when this was. I found this on Google. Um, but this is Senator Cruz. And one of the things that he liked was a not so appropriate post on social media. Um, Yes, you remember this, Matt. Uh, this was alarming. Um, we never know who's actually going through our likes. We sometimes just go on social media and like whatever we think it's funny or we like whatever is based off of our mood. Um, we just like some things just because we like the person. Some of y'all may be um, very big uh, Senator Cruz's fans and you might just see that he likes something and you go in and like it. 
um, he posted this, and let me tell you, this was huge. Um, someone with such character and demeanor as a senator should not be posting or sharing stuff like this on social media. But this here is just to prove that people can go th to any extremes just to see what you like. Um, on Twitter, sometimes what I've what I've noticed lately is that if you if your Twitter feed you don't have that much on your Twitter feed, you can see what other people like, and sometimes it kind of catches you off guard. You're like, well, um, my president of my organization shouldn't be liking um, a certain post, or this is not super tasteful. This came back to bite Senator Cruz in the butt, um, and. We may not realize this, but this is what our employers could see. A lot of us want to apply for jobs, but we are we are living in a fishbowl. If you want to apply for a job, you're living in the fishbowl of your employer. Your employer could be that one person. This could be your employer, and this could be you trying to apply for a job. They're looking at you. This could be your employer. This could be you amongst a pool of candidates and they're looking to see what stands out but they're also looking to see what may not be so um positive they may be looking to see well where did this person mess up this could be your employer and the company that they hired to investigate and narrow down all of their candidates um, you never know what's going on if you're applying for a position within like the federal government or um, even if you're applying for if you're applying to run for a president, vice president or for any leadership position within your organization, if you're involved in a student organization, these are your members looking at you. You know, these fish think they're just living their lives normally. They don't think anyone's really watching them. I mean, yes, they can see them, but they're not putting on a show for um these people here who are watching them they're just living their lives and what happens is that these people um that these people here are taking pictures of the different uh fish and they take a picture of it and they may use it later on your employer may be going through what you're doing they may see something that might look a little fishy not trying to be ironic, right? They might see something that's a little fishy, take a picture of it and then send it to your employer. They may keep it in their file, but not tell you about it. If an issue goes up or comes up later on in your, um, in your life, then you'll be able to see what, like they, they'll bring it up from your file and they'll be like, well, this happened on X date and now you did this. Tell me why I shouldn't believe you. Um, things like that are what can cost someone a job cost someone their reputation in this case for with like senator cruz we also have within our organizations people that speak on behalf of other people we have um how sometimes we have our friends that post a picture of us and they tag us in a picture um, when your friends tag you in a picture that's something that they're pretty much posting on your behalf um, it's hard to monitor what other people post about you, but what you can monitor is how you are, how you carry yourself at all times. And this is not saying that you shouldn't have fun. By all means, you definitely should have fun. Um, be yourself. Don't be afraid to be who you are and be confident in you, um, but also be mindful that, it, are, am I doing something that someone's gonna think is bad? Um, so like in this one, this uh, Chrysler Autos tweeted out, I find it ironic that Detroit is known as a hashtag motor city, and yet no one here knows how to, I can't make out this word, I kind of have an idea, but I can't make out this word, drive. This is an old one. Oh, whoops. If you can see the Twitter background, this is a pretty old Twitter post, um, but it still comes up. It still comes up under Chrysler, Mo Chrysler Autos. What happened in the situation was an employee was running this Chrysler Autos page. And that employee also has his own personal social media page. He thought that he was tweeting this on his social media page, on his personal one, not on behalf of Chrysler Autos. But look where it's at. It's here and it's for everyone to see. Some of y'all may be running a social media account for your organization. Some of y'all may be, um, 
your friend might tell you to tweet something or you may find something funny and want to send it as a personal message to um, your friend on Twitter or on Instagram or whatever, but you end up posting it. Those 10 seconds, 15 seconds that it's up can be costly, especially this is especially within Snapchat. Um, if you post a picture on Snapchat and you post it by accident, um, people can still screenshot, people can screen record. What can happen too is that it can get so severe that people can get their phones. This is like the power of technology. People can use a phone to record someone else's phone without getting that screenshot notification. You never know when people are doing that to you. Um, you may be posting a simple picture of um, your family. You're at a family gathering, you're having fun and someone may screen record it and use it against you with your boss the next day that you have to go into work. Um, we're all humans, we do make our mistakes, but we have to be mindful of the fishbowl that we're living in and which fishbowl we are in at what time of the day. I found this one too, of uh, being mindful what you type and what you type when you type it. So this one was from a CN, uh, ESPN um, anchor that, or a uh, journalist that tweeted out ESPN 300 about a top ranking player but the website, instead of leaning it to a website of um, the player, they he copy pasted a different website. Um, this was back in, or this was yeah, back in 2015. Oops. This is a, a tweet back done in 2015, and it's still coming out five years later. Um, things are permanent, no matter how much we think. I mean, yes, this person's account is verified, but things are permanent. Do you think maybe this was brought up in Jerry's future applications to get me to be um, the spokesperson for another company? Um, what we what we copy paste, what we tweet, we need to be extremely careful about because that's all part of our fishbowl. He was living in such a big fishbowl. Now, if he was just a normal person, if he was not working with ESPN, would this have came up? Yeah. I'm pretty sure this could have been seen in um, like a world star Instagram page or like America's funniest social media pages. I don't know, different um, like trolling social media sites where people are meant to laugh at, at other people's mistakes. But this hurt him. This definitely hurt Jerry and his career. This is the last one. Um, your account's getting hacked. Sometimes we may post something, you know, our, our accounts do get hacked. Yeah, that, that is a very strong possibility. But trying to cover it up with saying that your account was hacked. Now, I don't know if this one was really hacked or not, but this is from the New England Patriots that tweeted back in 2014. We apologize for the regrettable tweet that went out from our account. Our filtering system failed and we will be more vigilant in the future. This one is about a filtering system. Um, if you guys don't know, Twitter usually has a filtering system that you're able to um, block any tweets with certain words. Um, that's pretty much the same thing with all social, with other social media platforms. You're able to block a tweet from, or you're able to blo block seeing a picture of a certain nature. In this one, someone tweeted from this account uh, something that was not appropriate. Um, you know, it's hard to tell sometimes because sometimes someone might have tweeted it on purpose, but the repercussions were so bad that they just say, oh no, my account was hacked. Um, this is speaking very um, genuinely. This comes, uh, we see that a lot with people whose pictures have been leaked. Um, someone uh, accidentally is sending a picture to someone on Snapchat. And instead of pressing send to a certain person, they post it to their story. That picture is then screenshotted, screen recorded, taken from another phone, like taken a picture of from another phone. So that way they don't know that it was taken. And later on, it's used as blackmail. It's used um, against the certain person who tweeted, who posted it. But in reality, they were just sending it to one, receip one recipient. Um, this is why it's so important to know that anyone, everyone is living in a fishbowl. I have an 18 year old brother who's coming to UTEP. He's a freshman. He is starting to live in his own fishbowl. His fishbowl changed instead of being a fishbowl at his high school. 
He is now in his fishbowl at Utah, but his high school fishbowl is still there. People that you graduated with are still gonna see what you post. Um, your, his future employers now are get to, getting to see what he posts. He went from something like this to something like this. But you have to realize that there's screens that are around with people taking pictures that are still capturing everything. There's stuff that people are capturing, like the little children on the side, that may not be what's intended, but comes out in the background. Um, and this is why the concept of living in a fishbowl is so important. Um, any day in your life, you never know what can happen, what can come up. Um, don't let what happened to Victoria happen to you. And if it does, be confident in yourself. Have that um, that integrity in knowing that you did what you that you did right, and that you were in the right. And if you weren't, be honest, be upfront, and say, you know, I made a mistake, and I apologize. Real quick, um, a lot of us see the pictures that um, the Kardashian family posts. Um, a lot of them are very, very heavily photoshopped, and we know that we can see that, but. They have, I have never seen, I don't know if any of y'all have or if they've ever done this, um, apologizing for a Photoshop picture that they put, for a picture Photoshopped of their, oh, of their family members that they may not have liked. Um, it's important that we have that integrity and say, you know what, I feel like I look better a certain way. That's why I Photoshopped it. Um, but being honest, being upfront and not being afraid of um, your fishbowl. And that is the end of my presentation. I wanna open it up for questions that you all may have, um, any concerns, anything you want me to go over with you guys. Hi, I have a question, but it's um, based on our attendance. So the one that I attended earlier, they sent um, a link. Do we have the same thing? And also I really liked your presentation thank you edgar yes Never mind, I see it. yes i just sent it thank you all so much jessica Good. i do have a question for you um you know so kind of like a you are kind of like a public figure for utep why do you think it's so bad that a, a college student might have a picture with a drink in their social media why does alcohol, what does, you know, and for example, you, the example you gave about your friend, I mean, it's a really specific example that she went, or, you know, she accidentally uh, took a drink before a big, you know, a big event. But for an everyday, you know, life, why does it look so bad, you know, in, in a picture in, in a young adult, hopefully over 21, but what do you think it looks so bad? Well, you brought up a good point, hopefully over 21. Um, in the case that someone is not 21, it can eventually go against someone's, um, not like someone's future job. The, if you want to work in like a criminal justice system and you saw that you, someone saw that you were drinking underage, how do they know that you're really gonna hold up the drinking standard? Because you did it, you thought it was fine. Um, for someone who is 21, just a normal everyday UTEP student, it's important that you're careful with what you post about alcohol. Um, because of the negative connotation that alcohol has. It's like the same thing of um, someone posting a picture with undergarment. Um, undergarment is normal clothes, right? It's something that everyone knows, something that everyone's aware of, but you can still see that like, it's, it's a negative connotation that people have about it. Um, oh, I saw someone's underwear or like a, a woman with a bra strap. Oh my gosh, I saw a bra strap. Like that's not, that's not appropriate. Um, it's that idea of what people may think. Um, also, you never know as a young adult, like I personally right now don't know what law school I'm gonna end up going to, um, but they can still look at your social media. They can still see. Um, many people come in and they're young adults, they're having fun, enjoying life, but their future employer could be a friend that they have on social media. Um, or they can, it could go, you never know what one picture might blow up into. You have a picture with an alcoholic drink, you're at a, a place in um, 
you're in Miami, right? You're of age, you're in Miami, you're having fun. It's just a simple picture with a drink, but you can see someone in the back, like just not, um, not at their best and, and severely intoxicated. And that will eventually ruin their career. Um, because you can see, or they may not even be intoxicated. They might just be not having fun. They might be extremely tired and then just be asleep in the back. Someone may think, oh, this person like knocked out because they were so drunk, but they really weren't. Um, they may not have been drinking in reality, but you may have had that drink in your hand or it might've been on the table and people draw <coughs> things and that's <coughs> about who we are in our society right now, that everyone has the idea of oh, things are not going so good, things are going bad, um, and why they happen. People are instigators, and they'll always want to instigate what you post, even if you're just going through everyday life right now. I hope I answered your question. Yes, you um, you kind of did. It's just like, it still amazes me how society kind of shapes, you know, us young adults that, I don't want to say limit us to do, you know, while we think it's right but it's just you know society it's uh <laughs> it's uh an interesting thing to talk about but yeah you answer my question thank you jessica yeah and that's it's the so the age and social media that we live in like we don't know what's gonna happen like i talk to my parents all the time and i talk to my family i actually told my parents about what happened with my friend victoria and they're like if they would have known what I did back in high school, like, or back in college, like, I would have, they would have, like, I would have been fired. I would not have a job right now. And it's just the way how technology can bless us. Social media can really bless us, but it can also really hurt us. Um, there's another question on the chat. On that question, what if they were in a different country where alcohol age requirement is different? Um, so yes, I actually did uh, go to, I, back when I was in middle school, um, I went to Russia and I went to Russia for school. So I was there having fun um, and evidently Russia is very big on like the vodka stuff. So I went into a distillery and I was there, drinking age was like 16. I looked a little older than I actually was. Um, but I was there and I didn't necessarily consume anything, but my mom was like, here, take a picture with this. Like, it'll look cool. Like you're in Russia, like, oh my gosh, just do it. Um, and I was like, no, we took a picture, but we never posted it. Um, my mom wanted to post it. She's like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And I was like, no, cause who knows what would happen? Like I'm only, I was only 12, uh, 13 at that time. And it was like, oh my gosh, like she's taking a picture with that, did she drink it, did she not? Or is she taking a picture at a distillery? Um, is she drinking alcohol or not? At like age 13, um, it still affects you everywhere that you go. Um, in Mexico, I know like just across our border, it's drinking age is 18. You can go over there on your 18th birthday, still be a high school student and have some fun. Um, even if it's a require, even if like the age limit is 18 over there, but 21 here, um, the when you post a picture you can never tell where you're at it's just looking at who you are as a person and what you are doing at that time yes alejandra that's very helpful advice you shouldn't share anything that you wouldn't want your grandmother to see and i think it's very helpful advice that is true um also one thing that you can realize is i wouldn't want my future failure to see this then i shouldn't post it because sometimes like sometimes grandmas can be very chill it can be very fun sometimes it can be and like in my situation with my grandma sometimes it can be your grandma that wants to post a picture of you guys like with margaritas or a picture of you guys taking a shot um because that's how my grandma is you know like i don't know if any of y'all have those type of grandmas but my grandma loves to post everything and share fulanita did this fulanita did that on like social media but um we also have to be mindful of they might want to be, they might be okay with it, but what about your future employer? Um, for those of you who aren't married, what will your future spouse say about you posting something on social media, meeting you for the very first time? Um, and things like that. Yes. Is it because the truth is boring? The, is it because the truth is boring compared to what can be speculated? That has something to do with it too. Um, a lot of this has a lot to do with like self-integrity and self-image. 
So you may just be having fun or you may, ha you may not be having fun. You might be um, on a family vacation, you might be on a work vacation, but you're in Vegas and you're not able to go into any of the casinos, you're not able to do anything that's fun. You're just there strictly for work. But at night you go and you want to post because you want to brag to people about what you see, on, what you're doing, what's going on in your life. Um, you might want to look at look like the hot shot. Um, sometimes people do post that and people can get carried away with it. Um, posting what like you have a certain expensive brand of alcohol. And this is also true with drugs. I'm most, mostly focusing, focusing on alcohol because that's a little bit more pertinent to everyone. I don't think anyone, I think that not many people um, boast a lot about like drugs. But if you have something that's around you that's not, that, that falls in, it has a negative connotation in society, um, that can be speculated as something they may be super cool for some people and you may be wanting to post it just to brag but the truth can be boring sometimes you can just be like oh well i didn't have one drink but i wanted it to look like i was or you can be like um, you can be taking a picture having fun at a club right and you have like your drink you're like you look like you're having fun when in reality you were just dying inside and you only posted it to make someone else mad um Things like that are what can make you and break you. Um, your emotions can't be tied in specifically to everything that you post. Um, and be mindful of what goes on social media because it's permanent. As you guys saw the pictures from 2014, uh, 2012, um, things like that. Any other questions? You guys can unmute yourself to ask too, or you guys can also post on social media. I mean, post it on the chat. Sorry, I was reading. Uh, it's important to maintain a professional image on social media, absolutely. But also be genuine and be true to yourself. Um, don't fake your social media just to look like someone that you're not. Um, if you're genuinely professional and genuinely like a very business oriented person, then by all means have your social media like that, but have fun. You know, it's okay to um, post about who you are and what you like, but just be mindful of the stuff that's in your post. Be mindful of everything that's in your surroundings when you post. Um, and be mindful of what your future employer might be posting. Maybe just get off social media in general. That's true. Um, that's very true. And you know, a lot of people do take social media breaks and that's very, very healthy. Take a social media break every once in a while. Don't believe everything that people post on social media. Um, if you don't have to post, don't post it. Um, but at this day and age, especially with like the COVID situation right now, social media has been a lot of people's outlets. Um, and that's probably one of the biggest ways that we've transformed our communication is through social media. So it's good to get off social media for a little bit. Um, if you can do without social media in general, by all means, like kudos to you if you can do without social media in general. Um, but I know society has moved towards a very social, a pro-social media um, aspect. Any other questions, comments? Yeah, we don't miss out on anything anyways. That's very true. Um, a lot of, I know like I took a social media break this summer. I just wasn't really posting much. Um, I wasn't on there a lot. I was studying most of the time, but I wasn't really on there a lot. And yeah, it's, it's a really good like way to de-stress and um, to just re reconnect with yourself. Hello, hey Jessica. Hey Vanessa. I am now deleting so many pictures on my social media. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Honestly, um, it takes you a lot for you to realize what what people can do and what they can find on there and what sometimes you just post it because you're like I'm having fun but later on when you go back and look at it and you're like oh no what did I post no you know I I thought you know it's good to be um you know legit you know kind of I don't want to misrepresent myself but what you just said made a lot of sense to me um I'm I'm a create I'm a YouTube creator and I, I started a channel called Cool Paso. Uh -huh. we, we record sports here in El Paso. 
That's awesome. And I have a lot of clients. I have a lot of, you know, fans. And I'll, I'll go ahead and, and allow them to be my friend on, on social media. But I also do have a lot. Of, I have to deal with a lot of politics as well. And uh, just recently, um, <clears throat> I got into like some kind of a political uh, deal where, where people were telling me, don't record this team. If you do, there's going to be consequences. So I had to like... <sighs> I, you know, that I, I was I was contributing to a team that that did what I do. Uh, you know, they record sports. I'm not going to name it, but um, I had to choose whether or not to record this team, which they were an excellent team. Uh, they just had, you know, a couple characters, a couple parents that um, were loud mouths, and. Um, you know, I, those people are on my social media, they're judging me that, you know, I sell products, you know, I sell <laughs> services. So I'm definitely gonna start deleting some pictures. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And I'm going to share my screen real quick. So you guys can see a very helpful tool. Um, Oh, let me see the chat. Also watching what your friends post. Yes, please watch what your friends post. Tell them like, I'm sorry, but please don't post anything about me. Um, or just let them know, like, if you're going to post something like about me, just run it by me first. Um, your true friends are the ones that will really be okay with it and actually show you what they're going to post beforehand. Or they might just evaluate it themselves and say, you know what, I don't think Jessica's going to like this post. I'm not going to post it. So this here is a very helpful tool for Twitter. Um, I don't know if y'all can see my screen, but you can just Google Twitter advanced search and you can figure out here what you've tweeted. Um, you can go back and you can see from certain dates, like since the beginning of you, since when you first got Twitter, um, I think I've had mine since like 2011 or something, but you can go in and see did you possibly tweet a racist slur? Um, did you possibly tweet um, maybe a curse word or two that you may not have liked? Or did you possibly tweet something that may have been misleading, but you don't remember? And sometimes like we have like oh, thousands of tweets and to go through all of them may be very hard. You can easily go on here, type a certain word and see and search for it. Um, that's a very helpful tool that um, I've learned through my experiences and like pageantry that um, a lot of people need to take into consideration. I haven't found one for Instagram or Facebook yet, but if y'all do, please share it with me. Um, we also are running out of time. Um, do any of y'all have any last minute questions? I love this little awkward silence because I'm able to like just jump in without feeling awkward. Okay, so I'm going to leave my email on the chat. Um, feel free to email me with any questions, any concerns that you may have, or if you want to just talk about it, talk about things that are in your social media, um, talk about things that are going on in your life that maybe you may need some advice, need some help with. I am no expert, I'm still just a student, but I can most definitely serve as an ear to listen to and a shoulder for you all to lean on or to cry on. So here is my email. Um, and I thank you all for joining me on this session today.